Now, earlier this year, President Cyril Ramaphosa signed into law the Revenue Laws Amendment Bill that establishes the two-port retirement system. The two-port system officially kicks on on the 1st of September 2024. But what exactly does it mean from a legal and financial perspective for citizens of South Africa? Very good evening. My name is Thabo Mulukwan. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we spotlight the Revenue Laws Amendments Act and uh, the two-port retirement system, which comes into implementation on the 1st of September 2024. Joining me this evening to kickstart the conversation is uh, Nicolette van Furen, who is a partner at full-service law firm Weber Wenzel. She joins us to help us understand the legal framework of the Revenue Laws Amendments Bill with a focus on the two-port retirement system. Nicolette, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Much appreciated. I mean, um, I think, you know, before we can get into the nitty-gritties of uh, the Revenue Laws Amendments Bill and just basically the re two-port retirement system, um, maybe let's break it down mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, a layman out there because there's a lot of um, technicalities when you talk about a uh, two-port retirement system there. Maybe let's break it down from the beginning. What does it mean? Okay, so from the 1st of September, we're going to have two new parts in a retirement system. It doesn't mean that you're going to change your retirement systems. Whatever fund you're currently contributing to, they're going to create two more parts. Now, currently you have, or most people have retirement savings, and those retirement savings are going to be called your vested pot or your vested component. From that component, they're going to take 10% or a maximum of 30,000 Rand, they call it seeding capital, and yeah. that is going to go into your new savings pot, which is one of the two pots that are going to be created. So you'll have a starting capital in your savings pot of 30,000 Rand maximum, or 10% of whatever else you've got. Then you're going to have another pot or component that is going to be called your retirement pot. Now these two pots, the savings and the retirement, are going to grow with future contributions from the 1st of September. There'll be no further contributions going into your vested component, which are your current savings, but only into the savings and the retirement pot. And they will be split one third to the savings pot and two thirds to the retirement pot. Um, before we, we, you know, we, we, we expand on that, so when we talk about the Revenue Laws Amendment Act, uh, basically what are we talking about? This is the act that actually establishes the two-part system. We, yeah. were, we were waiting for a long time to see what would happen and eventually there was various Revenue Laws Amendment Bills um, which, which set out various iterations of what we eventually became known as the two-part system and that is what establishes the two-part system. There were amendments to the Pension Fund um, Act as well but that was more technical issues where they changed definitions and things to cater for the two-part system. But in effect, the Revenue Laws Amendment Act creates the, the two-part system. So initially, what was proposed? And, uh, you know, when you look at the significant changes there that took place to the framework, let's talk about uh, what it details, basically, because, yes, we are talking about the two-port retirement system and, yes. uh, you know, all the technical aspects that come with it. But uh, basically, uh, what were the initial changes? Because it seems like, uh, you know, it has been in the pipeline for quite some time now, and now uh, it will be in full force. Yes. So I, th I think the idea of the system has always been there. It has always been to basically twofold. One, to make people and force people to save for their retirement because a lot of people were leaving employment to get access to their retirement funds. So this system forces people to retire, I mean, to save until retirement, which is in your retirement component. You can only access, access that amount on retirement and not through a lump sum cash payment. It will have to be annuitized when you retire. Then the other side was during the COVID pandemic, a lot of people were finding themselves in financial difficulty without yeah. access to any financial means. And so the savings part came into effect as a result of that to allow people or members of retirement funds access to financial aid in emergency situations. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people will see it as that, you know, I think a lot of people see it as they've got access to financial mm. savings so they can access it. But that is the intention behind it. So I think the idea has always been there. The major changes that have happened is really the implementation date, which was originally going to be March this year. Um, and then it was proposed to be March 2025, and ultimately we settled on the 1st of September 2024. 
Um, other changes were the seeding capital amounts. It was originally, it was still going to be 10%, but it was maximized at 25,000 Rand. They've now changed that to 30,000. And then um, we were also waiting to find out how um, SARS would tax the any withdrawals from your savings yeah. bond. Now, that is another major issue that I think members need to be aware of. Um, any withdrawal from your savings pot is taxed at your marginal rate. So that will be added basically to your income and you'll be taxed at your income tax rate. Interesting that uh, you brought that one um, uh, to, to, to the fore. But, you know, um, you know, these changes, how significant are they, uh, you know, um, in the greater legal, um, um, you know, landscape, uh, particularly looking at... Uh, the excitement that has been building up from uh, you know citizens that will be able yeah. to dip into you know our retirement uh, ports um, in, in, in uh, you know from September, but I'm interested also in finding out the withdrawals are per financial year or per tax year or or basically when you've withdrawn and then that's it. What happens? Okay. So in your savings pot, you can have one withdrawal per tax year. Um, there's no maximum. You can withdraw as much as is in the pot, but it has to. You have to have a minimum withdrawal of two thousand rand. So as long as it's over two thousand rand and you've at least got two thousand rand in the pot, you can withdraw whatever you want once within a tax year. There are other issues, um, you know, when you when it comes to retirement or if you're leaving employment and you're transferring funds, there's certain technicalities as to whether you've had your withdrawal, whether you can take another cash lump sum, but that, that's more technical. But in general, in, uh, members are entitled to one withdrawal per tax year. Mm. Just lastly, before I let you go, um, um, how important is educating the public about this? Because you, uh, as you explain it, it gets more complicated, mm -hmm. especially, um, uh, you know, looking at uh, the different laws that come yeah. uh, to play when you talk about the two-port retirement system. How important is, uh, you know, educating the public about this and the laws that come with it? I think it's critical. Um, a lot of people I've spoken to think that your current savings are going to go into the system and they're going to lose their, their current savings, which is not the case. That is going to stay as is. That amount stays subject to the current rules. The other main issue that I think members need to be educated on is you cannot just access this money without paying tax. You know, it, and it's yeah. a high tax rate. If your tax rate is at 40%, that is the tax you're going to pay on it. And it's subject to a tax directive. So there may be other monies that are deducted that are owed to SARS or something like that. So I think it is absolutely critical that you know that you shouldn't just take this. It is for an emergency situation. Um, and you are ultimately depleting your retirement fund savings in any event by taking these amounts. So it, it's, it's very important that members are educated in this. Nicolette, much appreciated. Unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but um, that was very insightful. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. That was uh, Nicolette van Furen, their partner at Full Service Law Firm, Weber Wentzel, who joined us this evening to give us a better understanding on the legal framework of the two-port retirement system that comes into implementation on the 1st of September 2024. We're going to take a quick breather. When we come back, we continue the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on the Revenue Laws Amendments Act and the two-part retirement system and got a better understanding of the legal framework. Now, we shift gears to get a better understanding of the financial implications of the new system, which kicks in uh, in a few days. Joining us uh, via Zoom, his certified financial planner and managing partner at Sugar Creek Wealth, uh, that's Gerald Nondiambira to talk to us through uh, about uh, uh, the two-port system and um, uh, you know how this will impact on ordinary South Africans. Uh, Gerald, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Well, it was a pleasure. Much appreciated. I mean, Gerald, you know, I want us to take it down to the ground level, you know, to kick things off with an understanding from a financial planning point of view as to what the new legislation means for financial service providers and the way that they need to work from now on. I mean, what exactly um, uh, is the Revenue Laws Amendment Act mean? Okay. So now the two-port system came as a result of 
many people having gone through COVID and depleting their savings. And with depleted savings, a lot of people started saying, well, I'm, I've got no money, but I've got money in my retirement fund. Why can't I access that? And gradually, labor and government saw that there was a need to release some of the money held in retirement funds of individuals, and that's how the two-port system came about. As of the 1st of September, you will have two pots of money, one being your savings portion, and the other one being called your retirement portion. And at present, all your money is sitting in what they call the vested pot, um, which is your current fund. And as of the 1st of September, you can withdraw 30,000 or 10% of what you have in your retirement fund and put it into your savings portion and the rest will go into your retirement portion. Now, your savings portion, you can withdraw on the 1st of September, which what which is what many people want to do. Um, and on your retirement portion, it's actually going to be split in two. The retirement portion being the money you had up to the 31st of August 2024 and your future your future contributions. Future contributions, you'll never be able to access them anymore um, until you're age 55, permanently disabled, or if you emigrate. Um, but your current contributed portion will have the same rules which apply um, to, to, the, to, to the date of 31st August 2024. Mm. I mean, so Gerald, how do all these changes, you know, specifically affect the government employees fund? Uh, because, you know, they've been asking questions about it and it seems like because there's a lot of technicalities when you talk about uh, the two port retirement system, some, somehow, um, you know, um, it, it gets complicated. Well, look, the government employee pension fund will be affected like all other provident and retirement funds by the two-port system. You have um, the rules which will be exactly the same for GEPF. The difference is for people who are aged 55 and over. Because remember, the retirement age in South Africa technically is 55. Yeah. So if you are 55, you have the choice to either go two-port or not. But if you cho choose to go two-port, you will not be able to change back. So it only affects people who are age 55 and over. And there's a lot of um, circulation, circulating stories which say, you know, if you, if you get two pots, you'll never be able to access your money, which is not true. The money you have up to the 31st of August, if you resign, you'll still be able to access it as per current rules. It's only the new contributions which will have that um, caveat of saying you have to wait until you reach retirement age. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, Gerald, uh, you know, I was talking to Nicolette Van Furen earlier on just to break down the legal aspect of, uh, uh, of this, this bill. Uh, but I'm also interested in finding out, because we did touch on the issue of, uh, you know, the money being taxed according to the tax bracket of an individual day. Mm. Uh, how, you know, how... how uh, uh, how are people going to be able to navigate this? Because, you know, once you you, you get taxed, maybe 40%, for instance, uh, somewhere, somehow, this will be too much. Look, um, you will be ta taxed at your marginal rate. Most people, it's about 25%. Yeah. Um, another thing is you won't be able to access your money and make the withdrawal if you're not registered currently with the South African Revenue Services. Another point you need to remember is that you need to get a tax directive. And if you owe on your taxes, SARS will take what you owe them first. So the, in essence, the 30,000 will not be 30,000. It will be 30,000 less your tax, less any administration fees, and less any penalties or amounts owing to the South African Revenue Service. Mm. Uh, Gerald, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to uh, expand more as we wrap up the conversation, particularly looking at uh, uh, for people that, for instance, uh, you know, don't w actually want the savings port. Um, uh, actually, they don't want to withdraw anything there. Normally, what happens is this, uh, is it still going to be the same uh, for them uh, to wait for at least until the age of retirement? 
uh, and also won't they be affected in this instance? But let's talk about that when we come back after the ad break. Gerald Mnam Diandira, the uh, financial planner and the managing partner at Sugar Creek Wells, joining us to give us his insights on the two port retirement system as we seek to understand as much as we can possibly can ahead of the official implementation of the act and system come the 1st of September 2024. Let's take a quick breather. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Much appreciated for joining us. We are getting closer to the end of the show and have been in conversation on the Revenue Laws Amendments Act and uh, the two-part retirement system. Still joining us via Zoom is Certified Financial Planner and Managing Partner at Sugar Creek Wells, Gerald Mnambandira, as uh, we wrap up the conversation. Uh, Gerald, as we wind down the conversation, what happens, uh, you know, in an instance where you don't actually one, the savings port facility where your retirement is concerned. I mean, what if you want things to remain as they are, where you don't want <laughs> access to all of it, or maybe just want to keep putting money towards retirement without any disruptions or withdrawals? Look, um, it's a law which affects all retirement funds. So remember, the actual structure of retirement fund is going to change. The only people who have the opportunity or option to keep things the way they are are those who are technically retired but still in employment. So people who are aged 55 and above because technically they are retired and they can maintain the current structure without any hindrance. If you are below 55, the law will take its course and you will have to split your future contributions into the emergency pot, emergency savings and the retirement uh, pot as well. And remember, even if you decide not to take your 30,000 or uh, your maximum 30,000 this year, it will still be sitting inside your savings pot and you can access it at any point in the future. You are allowed to make one withdrawal every tax year so if you don't access it this year, it will still be there for you next year. Um, but the structure of the fund will definitely change um, unless you are already 55 and above and sitting in a provident fund. Mm. So now what happens in a situation where someone is retrenched or maybe resigns, for instance? How does the change in their employment status affect payouts? For instance, you know, what do they need to do in this regard? Look, if you resign, for example, today, you would receive the, your, your funds according to your current pension fund rules or provident fund rules. If you resign after the 1st of September, all the money you had contributed up to the 1st of September will be governed by the old rules. So you yeah. could theoretically withdraw all of it. However, the new money which comes into your retirement fund after the 1st of September would be restricted in terms of it only being available at the age of 55. Um, that would be what would happen. So you, you could theoretically still access all the money you had contributed up till the 1st of September um, if you resign in the future. But your future contributions are the ones which will be affected by the two-part system rules. Mm. Um, I, I mean, how important is financial literacy, particularly looking at this? Because, you know, when you get to communities and you start talking about two-part retirement system and people, you know, they would say, look, we, mm. we, we don't actually understand what they're talking about, but we hear that you can access some money. And, you know, there's a lot of hype towards this because people are excited that they'll be dipping their hands into their savings port. But how important is financial literacy, particularly looking at, uh, uh, you know, a situation uh, such as, uh, you know, people now accessing their retirement funds? Look, it's very important. This is an opportunity for you to sit down with your financial planning professional to understand how much you save for retirement and also understand how much you will have when you retire if you take the 30,000 versus if you don't. And it's also an opportunity to adjust your contribution so that you can set new goals for your retirement. So this program is financial literacy and education in motion. We need our people to understand that you need to know what's going on with your money. It's your money. 
if you don't take control, your money actually won't grow over the long term. So financial literacy and education is happening. And I think a lot of the life insurance companies are using this two-part system as a way of educating people about their retirement savings. But yes, we still are far from where we need to be in terms of starting to understand the more complex financial tools which we have access to, such as retirement funds. Mm. Um, just finally, before I let you go, I mean, uh, what would be the best way to, you know, navigate the incoming changes overall, uh, particularly looking at, uh, you know, normally with change, there's a lot of resistance uh, or a lot of panic because people do not uh, adapt easily to change. And then there's quite a lot of confusion and uncertainty there. How best do we advise people to navigate uh, through these changes? My advice is simply hold back. Um, these changes are going to happen. But if you are planning on doing a withdrawal, rather do it maybe in January or February for your children's school fees next year. Don't get caught up in the hype. Use this opportunity to get more information so that you understand what you are doing before you make that decision to make a withdrawal. Also, before you make a withdrawal, make it a rule that you sit down with a professional to show you the consequences of your decisions. It's your money, but also fully understand what you are doing. Um, it's, a, it's a good thing to have choice, and I think, you know, it's a step in the right direction. If Labour had their way, they wanted everyone to have full access to their retirement funds, mm -hmm. simply because more and more people can't find jobs when they have money stuck in retirement. But that's a discussion for another time. But this is a step in that direction to see how responsible can we be with 30,000. Perhaps if we show that kind of um, commitment and responsibility in future, um, the law will even change to allow us to have greater control of our retirement savings. Gerald, much appreciated for joining us. Always insightful. Thank you again. Thank you very much. That was uh, Gerald Muandiambira, the Certified Financial Planner and Managing Partner at Sugar Creek Wealth, uh, joining us to give us a better understanding of the two-part retirement system as we get closer to the implementation date, which is the 1st of September 2024, uh, you know, highlighting a very important aspect. They're saying that, look, uh, this is a start of great things to come uh, in terms of financial planning for South Africans out there. So uh, hopefully the 30,000 rands, um, people will be able to use it efficiently to, you know, cover a lot of things. And then from there, maybe it might open up uh, in the near future there. Let me thank my earlier guest, Nicolette van Furen, partner at law firm Weber Wenzel, who also joined us to give us clarity on the legal framework. On that note, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Or you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081 531 8857. Bye, too. Nagatabo Mulukwani and the rest of the team is good night from us and thank you for watching.